Welcome back. This is week four of Database and Rails. My name is Richard Schneeman. Today we're going to be talking about how Rails is an MVC framework or MVCR. Um, this is going to be kind of the, the culmination of uh, the last couple of weeks and you're going to see how we've been building up to this. So MVC stands for Models, Views, and Controllers. And then I also threw R in there because we heavily use something called routes. And whenever I'm building something in Rails, uh, this is what I'm thinking about. I'm thinking in, of the individual components, the models, the views, the controllers, and the routes. So uh, we've already talked about models. We did that in uh, week two, and we had that's those database back models. That's creating Ruby classes with active record where we can actually persist data to our database. And then last week we talked about views, so doing these pure Ruby views and, and generating this HTML as a way to actually show things to people and interact with uh, our users from a website standpoint. Uh, so this week we are going to be looking at or introducing controllers and routing. Uh, so again, just previously we talked about database back models and building the, the, our dynamic HTML views with Ruby. So how do you wire those to the web? How, you know, how can we mash up our week one and, or our, sorry, our, our week two and our week three, um, actually, you know, maybe even put some database-backed models into our views, and uh, finally, how do, how do people actually get to those? So they are going to be using routes, and routes is a, a Rails concept, um, but it encompasses and uses ideas that are um, outside of Rails. So you will encounter these ideas in other places. Um, routes are essentially mapped to a URL structure and an HTTP verb. If you don't understand the last part, the HTTP verb, you might be uh, new to you. Don't worry about it. We are going to cover it pretty much in depth in just a little bit. So first of all, let's start out with URLs. You've probably had a fair bit of experience and exposure to URLs, but uh, let's just kind of go over it. We have, this is an example of a URL, and we can break this into individual components. So here we have the exact same URL on the right-hand side, and the first part, the HTTP colon slash slash, is the protocol. So we're going to be using the HTTP protocol. Then the www is a subdomain, github.com is the domain or primary domain and everything after that is considered the path so slash names would be the path uh, we can have different protocols we might want to use https if we're using ssl um, anytime you're talking to a banking website you want to hopefully see that s in your url um, you might also see something along the lines of a, a, a trusted um, token if you're using Chrome or, uh, or Firefox. We can also use different subdomains. So we had www in the previous example. Uh, we could have none. We could just go to http colon slash slash github.com slash names and it, it will still work. Um, a lot of people think of this as an example of a canonical website, but um, it, it's actually just a... It has a subdomain. It's just blank. There is... It's, uh, <laughs> it's kind of odd to think about. It, it's nil. So... Uh, we could also, GitHub has an API subdomain, so api.github.com, and this is a completely different URL than, than the previous one and actually how they uh, redirect some of their API traffic. Um, and I also blog on uh, tumblr.com. I have my own custom domain, but if you go to schneems.tumblr.com, you will see a, a different path. And, and these are all different ways that we can use URLs to generate different um, different routes. All right, we can also have multi-part paths. So here we have um, github.com slash schnemes slash wicked. So we can have multiple things after the slash. You've undoubtedly seen this before. And um, we experimented with this a little bit in last week's exercise, but we can have something called the query string. In Rails, we are going to be um, interacting with a query string, and we're going to be calling it params. So here's an example of a query string. We have github.com slash rails slash rails slash commit slash master. It's quite a, quite a long URL. And then after that, we have question mark 
author equals Shanim. So all of that together is going to be the query string. Let's uh, let's zoom in on that and take a little bit of a of a closer look. All right, the query part of it comes from the the question mark, and the string is going to be the author equals Shanim's, and this is where Rails is going to populate our parameters from. Uh, so query question mark string author equals names. We can in we can have uh, more than one query string. We can have um, in this scenario we have author equals names and foo equals bar. Uh, so in this scenario, author equals names represents one. Foo equals bar represents another. With the ampersand in the middle, um, kind of breaking those up and and telling our URL that we have two different sets. So. Uh, what would be the value of author in this example? Well, if you said schnemes, you would be correct. Um, so what would be the value of foo in this example? If you said bar, you would be correct. Now, here's a, here's a interesting proposition. What is the value of bar? A lot of people think it is foo, but that is not the case. It is actually going to be nil. So... Author in this scenario is equal to schnemes, but schnemes is not equal to author. Foo is equal to bar, but bar is not equal to foo. It, the associations only work from left to right. Uh, so you can just, if you read it out and say author equals schnemes, it, it kind of makes sense. Uh, so we are going to be using the query string as a way to transmit additional data, um, or data in addition to our um, hard-coded our URLs, our paths, our subdomains.